Good day everyone, it's me again and I'm back with, should I say a tutorial video because in this case, um, I'm just trying to see uh, if I can explain how I come up with my five things. I created a paper clip, oh no, not a paper clip, a YouTube post a couple of months back and I know I've been terribly inconsistent with dropping videos on my youtube channel i always say that i'm going to try as much as possible to improve on that aspect of uh, me but i've not been able to be consistent and it's due to a lot of uh, work actually i've been very busy with quite a lot and i've been working on certain animations behind the scene that i can't really post because they are commissions so I'm very sorry and I apologize to anyone who has been waiting for me to drop a tutorial video in ages. Also, another thing I would like to confess to most of my viewers is that I no longer use Flipper Clip for my animations. Yeah, it's, it might come across as a shocker to most of you, but now I use Rough Animator and I really like the way it's built and everything, even though it lacks a lot of good, good and great features that Flipper Clip lacks but i just find it personal to fit my kind of um, animation and my kind of work and one of the major reasons why i switched to rough animator is because it has 4k as you can see the highest resolution in paper clip is still 1080p and i would actually love to have 4k resolution but aside that most people cannot really tell the difference they just want to see something cool so if you are still using paper clip you it is very much a great animation app for a beginner is the best i cannot recommend rough animator for a beginner if you're a beginner it's best to start with paper clip it adds a lot i cannot over endorse paper clip so um as i was saying i made a community post about um, what you guys would like to see a couple of months back and some of you said you would like to see me animate a rough scene a fight animation how i do it and um blurs some said camera movements and you said and some of you also asked how i deal with burnout when i'm doing my animation so really i won't be explaining the step-by-step -step process and how i do my animations this time around i will just be focusing on doing the animation and then i'll be talking about a couple of other things in the background so um if you like this style of video just let me know so but although i said i won't be explaining a lot about um how i do my animations in the background um i will still be talking a bit on what i'm currently working on so when i want to make a fight scene the first thing i would do is to know the characters i'm working with so yeah let's just have two characters duking it out it's not going to be a very long fight scene, just being a couple of people throwing punches. And um, I will just work on that while I talk about how I deal with burnout. But first, yeah, let me select my brush size. So usually, I just create a rough of two characters. And um, most of my fight scenes are usually side view, like kind of side view kind of stuff so um, let me see how well I can do this So, um, when it comes to fight scenes, there are different directions you can take as to the camera angles of how you want your fight scene to do. This is one camera angle, for instance, when you want to animate a fight scene. Then this is another camera angle. You can take it from the top. I just have two characters out of it out from the top. You can just play with the perspective. Now, yeah, he has his hand at the back and one at the front. So, let's play with that perspective again. There's one at the back and one at the front. Okay, 
so you can also just mess with the perspective there are different perspectives you can set your fight scenes and this is just one of them so this is perspective two this is perspective one so just know the perspective you are going with then the other perspective you can use um okay you can use it from the perspective of one of the fighters like let's say it's coming from this guy's point of view so you only show the other character is fighting with from that perspective so he has his hand stretched to the front and he has another stretched to the back i think close to his waist so basically you just need to learn how you can picture those characters from um, different perspectives and to really get good at this you just have to practice and draw a lot of different kind of art from different perspectives just try as much as possible to push your limits and everything so you can also view from this perspective um maybe in the future i will try and animate from different perspectives but i will work with this for now with this for now you can also decide to make them as far away as possible or very close together when they are fighting so let's deal with this and i'm going to delete this other two perspectives since it's just for just a form of explanation So when it comes to fight scenes, the first thing I do is just drawing the keyframes. In order to do this, the first thing, since I'm usually animating at six frames per second, I want to first reduce it. Oh, sorry, I'm always animating at 12 frames per second. I want to break it down so that I don't spend too much time on it. So I break it down to the half of 12 frames per second, which is six FPS. So now that it's on six FPS, I just draw the key poses for my fight scene want to enable your onion skin so let's go with the first guy over here throwing a punch uh, so it's throwing a punch at this guy and um this guy is going to be dodging it so another thing you need to understand is when you're going with your fighting you need to understand the dynamics of the battle um is someone far superior to the other or are they evenly matched or something like that so do they have powers or are they just throwing punches and in this scene i have them i want to make them evenly matched so this means that they'll be able to counter each other's moves as much as possible which means most of them won't be landing punches on the other to be filled with counters dodges and things like that than actual punch landing so when you are drawing this you need to make sure that the other person is anticipating the move of the other so when you are animating fight scenes you have to look at how each of their actions reflect on each other so now you can see this character is currently bending down so to dodge he weaves that punch and now he's preparing for a counter So this is the other punch supposed to throw after dodging the first punch. So you use your onion skin to show them attacking the previous frame of your opponents. That way it shows that they are actually trying to attack each other. Because if you don't make it look that way, it's going to look like as if they are just actually attacking the hair and they are not really going out for each other so this is just to show that um 
this was the position of the other guy's head when he was trying to land his counter attack but he's no longer there but the onion skin will assist you with that information now we see that this guy's head is no longer in this position because he dodged so you have to look for a way think of a creative way to make the character actually dodge it realistically without breaking physics or breaking you can break physics occasionally when you are doing your animation but you have to keep it in a realistic tone except maybe you are animating something that is meant to be extremely cartoony but if you are going for something more realistic then he has to dodge it in a realistic manner so his hand is still swung far back and he moved to the back a little bit I thought I'll be able to talk about that thing while I'm animating the fighting, but it seems as if I have a lot of um, explanation to do. Um, so he'll still keep his other arm steady. He's holding a punch in the other hand, probably to land his own following attack after he's landing his own counter attack. So when you are thinking of fighting, you have to think in arcs because the human body moves in arcs. So it swings from here to this point. And then this point, this fist moves from here to this point. Well, this guy gets ready to land his own punch. But first he has to adjust his right arm to clear the way for his left arm and he has to steady his stance so he shoots that punch okay He adjusts his legs while he shoots that punch. Now understand that they are evenly matched. So it means this guy is also going to dodge the punch by bending down to the other side or moving to the other side because it's more realistic that he dodges forward than backwards since he was twisting. So you have something like this. So he doesn't actually eat him on the head. Now the fun thing about animation and animated fighting is that sometimes you don't even need to play out the entire fighting in your head when you're animating it. It just comes to you. Right now this guy is in a perfect position to land a kick with his right leg. So the next animation would be him trying to land a kick. Don't really worry yourself about the um, the movement that much when you are in at this stage of animation because you are still going to come to the in betweens. So yeah, he twists to land a kick. while the guy on the left recovers from his punch his missed punch and prepares to counter that kick so now you have to think how does he counter this kick it's quite difficult for him to jump gag or jump to the right although he can weave to the right or weave to the left but I think a fun way would be for them to actually interact and um, let him stop the kick with his two arms. So he blocks the kick. Now the positions of your um, character is very important. Right now I'm just going to draw out the full kick we have played out. And I will adjust their position later because right now, if I, if I leave it this way, it's going to seem as if 
the guy on the right is being pushed back after landing his kick. But in reality, it's the guy that is receiving the kick that should be pushed back, even though he's blocking the kick, um, should be pushed back by it. So you worry about the details of the fingers and the arms later when you are doing your your sketch because this is still the rough. So this should push him back. You can play his back just to see what it looks like. Yeah, it looks like a nice fight scene. So yeah, you can have him put his leg down after the block, but still pushed back slightly. So shift him a little bit to the back. And let this guy adjust after landing such a kick. Just be mindful of the size of your character when you're animating a fight scene. You don't want to, you don't want them to be inconsistent, and uh, you want your proportions to actually stay quite the same. Or to now, you can see the guy that I'm drawing on the right looks smaller than the previous frame. So I'm going to adjust it just to make it match and bring him down to its original level. There's something that happens a lot when you animate. Look at the first <laughs> rough sketch I made. Look at how big they were. Now look at how small the eye this still is. It tends to happen to me a lot when I'm creating my animation, but as long as you keep the overall proportion, sometimes you might just have to work with the Camera sometimes you have to work with the backgrounds just to make that sense of proportion seem consistent. So and yeah, so that's just how that's just the basic regarding fighting. So after you make this, the next thing you want to do is to make your in-betweens. So you come here, come to frame viewer, quick between all frames. And yeah, start adding your in-betweens. But then you also need to adjust your frames per second and put them back at 12. So save changes. Then enable your previous frames and then frame after on your onion skin so that you can know the positions of your character. And then you can make your frame after more visible. And you can start adding your in-betweens. So yeah, you just have to follow the movement of your character. Look at the punch. And this was before the punch. So you want to keep it within the middle of the punch. Sometimes you can add these smear frames to make it appear fast. So smear frames just basically involves you drawing the hand in motion, even though it is a still image. But by the time you play it, it's going to give it an illusion of speed. And then you want to also draw this guy anticipating that punch and moving accordingly. So usually I start with the head and then the rest of the body follows. So I'll just be adding in between to all these frames. And maybe I'll use this period to explain um, how I deal with um, burnout and everything now first of all i think everybody have their different ways of dealing with burnout and uh, the different ways of experiencing it sometimes there are times when i don't really feel like animating so when it comes to that i tend to do something different i just change what i'm doing if i've been animating for weeks and i'm tired of animating sometimes i just decide to write songs or maybe just watch a movie so just relax and try as much as possible to change um, what you've been doing your routine if you are doing something over and over and over again it gets tiring and we are all humans we are not robots and it might even affect the um, quality of your animation because something in you is just tired of doing the same thing over and over again so if that's the case and you want to still be productive while you are doing 
when you're having burnout, then I notice that sometimes changing what what you've been doing, like maybe you've been making animation, you decide to draw a, a instead of making animation, you decide to come up with like maybe a comic book panel or something. Just change your medium. Change if you've been drawing, decide to paint, you can decide to paint. You can decide to sing. Me, I like singing. I like composing songs sometimes. Although my songs are very corny, so I'm not going to be posting it on YouTube anytime soon. So just try as much as possible to do something that is creative. Yes, you can also write as well. Sometimes I write, but I don't do that as often as I did back in the days. So you can write. And if you see or you notice that you've not been having fun or having time with family members, you can decide to spend that time with your family members and unwind it's not every time that you have to walk 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 the body itself wants to rest so if your body's telling you wants to rest you gotta rest and then having burnout is not the same as you being lazy you don't mistake the two there are times when most people are just plain lazy and they just want to have fun if you know you since you've been having fun too much it's better for you to just um get your pants up and then be ready prepare prepare to animate prepare to walk instead of just having fun all the time because you know this is your trade and um i think you don't really need to tell anybody about this that they need to get up and have work and everything especially when you know your livelihood depends on it so i think that itself it's a it's a motivator on too and that helps you to get back on your feet and stop being lazy but if you are genuinely experiencing burnout that's the time for you to switch whatever you are doing and try something else and then if you are not feeling lazy and you actually want to animate and you are not having that vibe to actually deal with it then one thing you can do is watch animations other people's animations and that's what i actually do sometimes when i feel like animating and i'm tired of animations um it's it's uh, what what really drives me is seeing something new seeing something cool just going out there checking them on youtube or on social media like um, instagram you see a lot of people with a lot of different works that can inspire you and when i see those things it wants me to get on my feet and then actually animate and it inspires me for instance there was this time when i was um, working on one certain commission and i was getting tired of working on that commission and that was the period when um i think dragon ball um dragon ball z broly came out so I watched that movie of um, Goku fighting, Goku and Vegeta fighting against Broly, and there was something about the animation that really um, spoke to me. That really got me interested in animation. I wanted to experiment on the rough line that the animation had. So um, that actually got me back on my feet, and I really wanted to draw for like the next couple of days it was just my body and time i've charged my tablet and then everything is on i'm always eager to animate any free time i get i always want to animate so sometimes looking at other people's work is a massive way that um, to get rid of your burnout it works for me a lot i don't know but sometimes you just need to know what works for you and sometimes music is also very important music can also help you deal with burnout um I'm someone that likes listening to music a lot and i even listen to music when i animate so it's not exactly boring so and i also have other animators also say they love listening to music when they are making the animation so music also helps and what other thing was asked um mm, yeah, asked about my fighting okay yeah someone also asked the community about um blows how do i do blows when i'm doing my fighting and that is usually done after my whole animation on um a video editing software called kind master i always put it on my description of my videos anytime i make videos it's a video editing tool i use so it has a lot of um features that you can use to amplify your animations you can do everything on feedback clip. although regarding the blur I realized that flipper clip just added this feature we have the smudge and the blur here on flipper clip so i've not really used it but i think um having this on flipper clip will make you putting on things like blurs and animations a lot easier and the reason why i'm saying that it's going to be a lot easier than using 
a video editing software like um, KineMaster is that you can be very specific with this. In KineMaster, I don't have that luxury of being very specific with the way I use my brush. But here, it's technically like a brush. So I, I really have a lot of um, hope for that, for this. If it turns out to be very good, maybe I will actually have to switch back to Flipper Clip for my animations instead of using Rough Animator. So that's just how it is. I don't want this video to be longer than this. I uh, will update you on the process and I will next time I'll be making a video on the outline for this fight scene just to let you know where it's going and I'll be adding other things. So that's basically it for now. But don't hold me on it. You know I can be very unreliable when it comes to posting daily but I'll try my best to follow through this and then to see things through. Um, the video is already going into 30 minutes long and I don't think anybody really has the patience for that. Especially me, I can't sit down and watch someone draw and do this. I know most of you that are listening to this are not even actually paying attention to the drawing. You are just listening to it, even probably on the background, which is what I do most times. But if you are a visual learner and you find this helpful, then you can drop a comment and maybe give me some form of encouragement. <laughs> That's how it goes.